In this video, we're going to finish talking about nutrition. So the first one is dentition, about um, the different types of teeth that different organisms have. So herbivore, carnivore, and omnivore, as you can see, have different shapes um, and different numbers of teeth. And that allows the animals to be more adapted to the specific food that they eat. The next one is about obesity. Um, obesity is frequently seen in animals dealing with environmental fluctuations and nutritional requirements. So what it means is that um, an animal could develop a certain uh, digestive system that allow them to take in a certain amount of nutrition. However, if the environment changes and the animal is eating more than they are used to, and more than uh, evolution allow them to normally eat, then they're eating a larger amount of food and they're digesting more nutrient, which make them obese. So this is one cause of, uh, of obese is environmental change. So this is showing you that, um, for example, human beings, when human beings evolved, we weren't used to have an abund abundant amount of food and we only um, we're kind of taking the nutrient and really absorbed it because the food was not very abundant. However, nowadays there's more fat and um, more sugar that humans are eating than what the body accommodates. So um, it's more likely for us to become obese because we are eating more than the body can um, more than the body normally takes in. However, I would say um, after a certain number of years, let's say uh, a million years, if human beings still exist, then it's possible that um, people who eat the same amount of food as we do right now are not going to be fat because their body is going to um, kind of adapt to the amount of food that we're eating right now. That's just my wild prediction that may or may not be true. Um, the, GI, the next one is about GI tract ad adaptations. So as you can see, for carnivores, we don't have a cecum. Well, we have a, a tiny one. It's kind of a vestigial structure. However, for animals that eat plants, they have a very long and windy cecum. And this cecum allows those plant-eating animals, those herbivores, to host bacteria colonies that allow the digestion of cellulose. So set, remember, if you can remember, cellulose is um, the sugar that makes up the cell walls of plants. And for animals, those cellulose allow us to, uh, is a source of fiber to allow us to digest other food better. However, for herbivores, they have to digest the cellulose and take in the nutrients from the cellulose. In order to do that, they have bacteria hosted in the cecum um, in order to do the digestion. Uh, this next one is ruminant. Um, because, uh, so for a cow, for example, they eat all that grass and it's um, not as nutritious as the same amount of uh, meat. And um, in order to uh, accommodate for that, they have those extra parts of digestive system or expanded upper GI tracts that allows the food to be held in the upper GI tract for a longer amount of time, which allows the bacteria to um, digest the food better. So as the food is held in the GI tract, the bacteria is going to keep on digesting it and uh, digest as much of the food intake as possible. Here's some uh, introduction to certain disorders. You probably know most of them already, so I'll just go through it real quickly. The first one is ulcers. Um, the, uh, the cause is usually by a certain bacteria called Helicobacter pylori bacterium, and it's often stress-linked. And this, uh, this bacteria kind of eats up the protective mucus lining of the stomach, and then the result is you would have a burning sensation in the stomach. The next one is called acid reflux. We all know that there's a lot of acid in the stomach, um, which allows the digestion of um, protein. And uh, there's a lot of physical digestion that goes on in the stomach as well. Uh, the acid reflux is when the stomach fluid, um, the, gastrin the gastric juice, uh, goes upward into the lower 
esophageal sphincter. So this is the muscle that's on the lower part of the esophagus. And then that um, also gives you a potential burning sensation. And medication that reduces the HCL production. Remember, the HCL is, uh, is a part of the gastric juice because it helps the enzyme um, function. So if you use a little bit of antacid, it helps uh, neutralize that extra amount of uh, hydrochloric acid. This next one is diarrhea constipation. That's um, a problem with a water intake. There's either too little water um, being reabsorbed, and that gives you diarrhea, or if there's too much water being reabsorbed uh, from the large intestine, then you get constipation. The last one is irritable bowel disease, which is uh, an inflammation of the large intestine. The, the, the cause of this is unclear. Um, however, we do know that the symptom is you have ir uh, irregular bowel movement and so on. The so last one are these questions. You want to make sure that you can answer these questions. So take a look at this as well as the um, in our document, there are all those vocabularies that I listed. Make sure that you can understand those vocabularies and know especially the structure and function of each part of the digestive system of animals.